In this video, I'm going to talk about the envelopes in the Vectra. So to begin with, I'm going to just load our default patch. So you can all start at the same place with me. Again, I'm just going to turn down these other oscillators, lock it in on oscillator 1, so that's all we're hearing. All right, so let's go to these envelopes. And the first thing I'm going to do is, let's say I'm going to use the envelope to modify the pitch of this oscillator. And we hear nothing at the beginning because all the envelope times are defaulted down to zero. Now these envelopes are rather unique. If you look along the left hand side, you're going to see what you would normally find in an envelope. You've got your attack time, decay time, sustain, and release. Over here you've got your delay time. Delay time is your initial delay from the time you hit a note to the time it starts producing the attack. Then once it produces the attack, it goes up to the top. It holds there for this amount of time, then switches to the decay time, which decays to the sustain level. And then once you release the envelope, you go down to zero potential at the release rate. Here you've also got a repeat rate, and by default it's set to no loop, which means you're just going to play a regular ADSR type envelope. And this reset function has to do with the attack whenever it's turned up. Now something else unique is your attack and decay time are shown as skip instead of a value. So whenever both the attack and decay are set to a value of zero, you're going to see this skip time. And what that means is the envelope will then jump to the sustain level. Alright, so let's show you some of the basic functions of this envelope. Um, we can set our sustain time down, set a decay up, go to our frequency modulation, and turn this envelope up. And we're going to sweep it over four octaves. Increase the attack time. Let's try introducing some delay time here. Okay, so you get the idea there. If we wanted the attack time, once it goes up to the top to hold, we could increase the hold time. Let's try that. Let's turn down our delay. Let's increase the hold time. There it's holding. Before it goes down, we could shorten our decay time. I'm going to clear this out, which we could also just press the knob. It'll jump to our lowest time. If we then want to jump to our highest time, press it again. It brings up 14.7 seconds. And that applies to all these controls. Well, the attack, decay, sustain, jumps from 0 to 100, and release goes from its shortest to its longest. The delay time here, when you press its control knob, you're going to notice these little icons of envelopes start changing. And that's how we select our different envelope types. So right here we've got our ADSR types. This is your typical exponential curves. Here we've got linear. Here we've got reverse exponential curves. Here we've got something I refer to as zappy and then bubbly. And then we start getting into these envelopes, which are actually one-shot envelopes. And what that means is, let's say we turn our sustain down and set a long decay time. I'm going to have to also increase uh, the release time on our output VCA. So we go here, and there, I can just poke a note once, and it'll run through that entire envelope. It'll run completely through that entire envelope without me having to keep my finger on the note. Whereas, if I were to go back here to the typical ADSR, it wants me to keep my finger 
pressed on there in order for that envelope to continue on. Let's say um, we go to a one shot here and increase the attack time. And so those are nice for percussive type envelopes where you don't want to hold your hands all the time, or maybe you want to use it for a modulation type envelope that'll run through its full course of attack, decay. Sustain is not used on the uh, these one shots, but the delay, attack, hold, and decay will have effect on the one shot. Uh, for instance, we could increase our hold time here. And you get the idea there. And there's multiple different uh, single shots here before we go back to our ADSR type waveforms. And those will also change the way that the envelopes repeat. And we'll check that out here. Okay, so here we have our envelope repeat function. Let's go ahead and turn that on. And I'm going to go ahead and clear out that release time. Go back here to our envelope. So what it's doing is every time we play a new note, it's running through the uh, delay time first, then the attack, then the hold, decay, and then repeating. We could also increase this repeat time to put a pause in there before the envelope starts repeating again. So let's try that. So even though it's repeating, we can still have predictable results every time we hit a new key. The other thing is the release has a little bit different effect on these ADSR envelopes versus how it happens on the single shot. So let's, let's try this. I'll dial up my release time. And you can't quite hear that because we need more release time there. But what it is, is these envelopes will continue to repeat until I let go of my finger, at which time it will jump to the release stage and then the envelope decay at this stage from whatever level it is currently at. Now, the difference is that envelope for the ADSR type envelope stops repeating when notes are let go. Now, if we go to a single shot envelope like this, the release time has no effect and these envelopes are going to repeat, and they're going to continue to repeat even when I let go. Now you can't hear that now because I've let go, but let's go to our envelope. I'm going to set it to drone. And that would be useful if you're using that repeating envelope as a sort of modulation um, where once you lift your hands off the keyboard, um, it's going to continue to do that modulation amount. The other thing I'll show you, let's turn the repeat off. We're just going to press that encoder. Now, let's show you what happens normally on envelope. Let's go to our ADSR type here. Let's dial up some attack time. And you see, whatever level the envelope is currently at is what level it's going to start its attack from, and it take this much time to reach the full potential. And so you kind of get that whoop, whoop, whoop. Now if we were to turn on the reset, every time we press a new key, as long as attack is greater than zero, it will force that envelope to start its lowest potential all the time. And that could be good if you're using this envelope as a modulation control.
Say to bring in the LFO amount and you always want it to start with zero modulation when you press a new key. That would be something you could apply that to. The other thing I'll show you, let's clear those out and let's show you how even though these envelopes are digital, they are modeled after true analog envelopes and how they work. What happens is you run through your attack and decay time and then you go to your sustain level. And if you were to adjust your sustain level while holding a note, let's just do that. You hear that envelope going up and down and it's doing so at the rate defined by the decay potentiometer here. So let's lower this value and you're probably going to hear some digital stepping because it's not slewing that you know every time we increase this value it's trying to get there as quick as possible. Let's listen to that. So you can hear the digital stepping in there but if we increase this decay time that stepping is going to go away. Now let's show you something else. Since we can press this sustain encoder switch and instantly jump from a high level to a low level, we're going to be slewing it at this decay rate, which you can apply for a special effect if you like. The other thing to keep in mind is as we get into the morphing between these envelopes is this decay time can affect um, how the envelope morphs from time to time. And so we'll get into that. Um, how about now? All right, so what makes the vector special, I should say, is not only all these envelope times that you have, including the delay, hold, repeat, and reset here, but we have a whole nother page here of modulation times. And so what we can do is we can set up two distinct times for every one of those stages and then be able to morph between them in some way. And let's show you how to do that. So let's start out with maybe a short envelope here. Okay, now I'm going to go to my envelope mod and I'm going to say dial in a much longer time here. Now here, this mod function is what is controlling the morph between these regular envelope times and the modulation envelope times. So let's go ahead and select, let's say stick X. So as I bring the stick all the way down, I'm playing these envelope times. And as I bring the stick up, it's going to interpolate or morph this decay time from 0.114 to 3.34 seconds while all the other stages since they are off are going to play at whatever these stages are set for. Let's try that. Now let's say we have zero attack here. Let's increase the attack for our modulation and try that out. So there we have two different controls, the attack and decay time that are morphing between one another just by moving this one control. And we could, let's say, assign that to key two to where the low notes on the keyboard are playing whatever the original times are. And as we play up to this high note, they're playing what the mod times are. We could be doing any of these parameters morphing between them as long as they're off here. Let's go back here. And we can press these encoders, which will turn them off. If we press them again, it will pull up the value that is already assigned to the original envelope time. And that way it's a quick way to say, okay, we don't want it on or we do want it on. It doesn't matter whether it's off or on if we morph between these two. As long as it's the same time, it's still going to produce the same envelope type. But that at least gives us a reference to where maybe we want the envelope to be shorter or maybe we want it to be longer than that original envelope time. Okay, I'm moving the joystick and it's really set up for key too, so. 
So you get the idea there, and you could do it for, let's say, a sustain level. Um, if the sustain is set to zero, maybe we want to set this to uh, high. Um, what else could we do? Mod wheel and touch. Now here's one of the instances where the decay time will affect the response of that morphing. So you see there, even though I'm moving my finger very fast to change the touch response, we're having a very slow... interaction there. So you can use that decay time to slew the changes as well. So let's do something else. Let's try morphing between looping envelopes. Let's turn on our loop. We've got a very fast loop time there. Let's go to our modulation time and I'm going to set that up for the stick. Again I can press that decay. It'll pull up what this original time is so I know that's what it is. And let's say I want to make it longer. Let's make it this long. So now, I'm morphing between those two decay times with just this stick. Again, I could turn up the attack time instead. And let's say I set the decay time to zero now. There you can see I'm, I'm fading from a decay-only envelope to attack-only envelope. Um, we could do all sorts of things, or we could, let's say, maybe we want to increase the repeat rate to slow it down. So lots of different things you can do there. Uh, again, the envelope shapes, you may want to use the linear type if you are replicating more of the EMS type patches because it used linear trapezoid shapes, which this can do. You may also want to use this uh, linear shape if applying this as a control to some other modulation source like the LFO amount, uh, just to have a linear response instead of Oh, your traditional envelopes like here. So the envelopes here, um, these envelopes are the same for envelopes 1, 2, 3, and 4. They all have their own modulation time. You could set them up to be modulated by different things. So you could have one of them morphing with the stick, another one morphing with the touch, another one morphing with the key position on the keyboard or the mod wheel. Now, the only difference between the oscillator envelopes and, let's say, the filter or the amplifier envelopes is on your initial times for the amplifier, you do have this control parameter. And this is controlling the amplitude of the output envelope. For instance, let's say touch. So there, as we press harder on the key, It brings that sustain level up. Now if we were to repeat this envelope, let's go ahead and turn that down and turn this up. I think you get the idea there. So the filter envelope, you've got your amplitude control right here as your control, just as the frequency mod in the oscillators has their control there. Other than that, the envelopes are all the same. You could do all sorts of weird stuff. you got four here, five and six envelopes. You can make them repeat, single shot, 
uh, your typical ADSRs and you can morph all of them at the same time. Um, so there's a lot of interesting things you could do there.